Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast, Episode 651. If you have a big belly, you may be at risk for Alzheimer's. BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about anti-aging medicine. Your host is Dr. Kathy Moffat, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging. Dr. Maupin is the author of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about testosterone replacement therapy for women, and Got Testosterone, the award-winning book for men that helps men choose the most effective and safe form of testosterone replacement. These books are available on Amazon or from Dr. Maupin's office at BioBalance Health in St. Louis and in Kansas City. Dr. Maupin's office is currently accepting new patients. Today we're going to talk about um, something that you may have thought about, but probably not processed in your thinking, and that is um, as we get older, and actually now I'm even seeing it in kids and young people, we find that uh, people's body composition changes with age, but it also changes with overeating. In America, we have too much food and too much fast food and too much um, carbohydrate food. And in America, we don't exercise enough. Those two things set us on a course to be sick as we get older. And some people are even sick as they are. Uh, they are sick as children and, and young people. So the reason for this, the basic reason, is that all of those things that cause us to be overweight, and especially if we're overweight with a big belly, that indicates that we have inflammation. Inflammation is at the heart of most of the diseases that cause us to be disabled that have nothing to do with trauma, of course, but they have to do with just gaining fat. And generally, it's belly fat. It's not fat on your arms. It's not fat on your legs. It's central belly fat, or they call it the apple the apple figure. So you may be like this, and then this, and then this. But it's not about how pretty you are, how thin you are. It's about how healthy you are. And so I'm going to speak to this particular physical um, attribute as something that you can change. And in changing that, you can change your risk for many diseases of aging. And aging is over 40. So I, when I make the statement that having a having belly fat or a large belly can increase your risk of um, Alzheimer's disease. I, I have a lot of backup for that. But there's a recent study that is most very poignant that studied people bet between um, the ages of 40 and 60, and they found that people who had visceral fat, so let me explain visceral fat. It's not the fat you can pinch. So if you can pinch your belly fat, that's not what I'm talking about. It's the belly fat that's underneath your abdomen, inside your abdomen. It is um, actually contained or, and it sits around your intestines, but it's not just little globs of fat around your intestine. It is actually um, called um, visceral fat. And so when I say visceral fat, that's what I'm talking about, in, fat inside your abdomen. And it looks like an apron. And that's what, that's what surgeons call it. The apron that hangs from, your stomach's over here, and this apron hangs from your stomach all the way down to your pelvis. It is meant to protect your intestines from trauma. It is meant to um, actually pick up things that shouldn't be in your abdomen and it engulfs them and protects you from them. Like, say you had, in the old days, you had a... Um, <clears throat> A splinter that was somehow got inside the abdomen, it will protect you from that by growing adhesions around it. But the bad thing about visceral fat is when it gets plentiful, when you actually have a larger waist measurement than a hip measurement, then you are going to be having that pad that used to be this, this thick that protects you becomes like that thick. So you have a huge amount of yellow fat hanging over your intestines, and it pushes out. That's the only place for it to go. So having, having that fat, we have found, causes us to have inflammation. 
Inflammation is when we have our white cells and our white, they make a lot of inflammatory um, kinins. They make, a, they make a lot of these liquid inflammation. And it was really meant to help protect us, to help us heal. But when you get this amount of fat, it causes and secretes all of these inflammatory cells, and it makes you to be inflamed all the time. The way I look at it in blood work is I look for a CRP. A CRP is a, um, it's like a Polaroid shot, a one shot of your inflammation. It can go up if you're sick. It can go up if you have a fever. It can go up if you have an autoimmune disease. However, it can go up just from being having belly fat. CRP is the way we look for your uh, level of inflammation. So let's go from fat to inflammation, and inflammation then is at the heart of Alzheimer's disease. Because it is inflammation that goes to our brain that causes those plaques that develop over our uh, nerves that cause us to be um, eventually not to be able to think, not to be able to mentate or recognize our relatives, and, and in the end leads to a, um, a bad end. We, don't, we can't remember anything. I mean, life is really about accumulating memories. And if you can't remember anything or anybody, your life is pretty empty. So no one wants to live like that or die like that. So avoiding this is very important. Um, Alzheimer's disease is not the only disease that belly fat and therefore inflammation increases your risk for. It increases your risk for cancer. We've known that for a long time. It increases your risk for heart disease and stroke. We've known that for a long time as well. It increases your risk for, um, for diabetes or prediabetes, insulin resistance, and it increases your risk for early aging, just looking old and all of your tissues aging quickly. We know all that, but now we know that it does increase your risk of Alzheimer's. So... Um, what we do in our office when patients come in for consults, especially their first and second consult, and then they can use this machine whenever they want to and just and see how they're doing on losing their belly fat. But um, we use an in-body machine. Uh, it, we've been using it for over 12 years, and we have been following people's muscle mass, which is very important to have high muscle mass and low belly fat as you age. So it's one of the things we monitor our testosterone um, treatments with because people with testosterone increase their, their muscle mass, increase their, um, increase their metabolism, and then they also decrease fat as they make more muscle because muscle is where you burn calories. And when you burn calories, you decrease fat. So that's one of the things that we look at. But the other that I look at, and I explain to patients, is I look at their, their visceral fat. And there's, it's not a, actually a measurement of it. it is, it's, it's kind of a, if you are less than 10, you're good. If you're healthy, if you're over 10, and how much over 10 you are means that you're at risk for inflammation. And you're at risk for these other diseases. So we try to get our patients to decrease their visceral fat their belly fat, and decrease their beer belly or their Dunlap's disease or whatever you want to call it, but to, to bring their belly in by making that pad of fat shrink. And that pad of fat, you can't really see. You can just see the outcome, which is making you have more of a waistline. The, the, um, the research study, just in case you were interested, looked at the, um, the amount of belly fat and associated it with the... Um, and asked how much amyloid or how much abnormal um, uh, it, they're, actually, they're actually kind of like growths or corrosion on your um, nerves. Uh, they call it amyloid plaque. How much amyloid plaque is in a brain of someone who has um, a lot of belly fat? And they followed these patients. So as patients gained belly fat and got a bigger waistline, their MRIs showed more plaque. And you'll see more plaque. You'll see plaque on your brain long before you have symptoms of, of Alzheimer's. So looking at, the, looking at an MRI shows you whether you have plaque or not. 
and progressively getting worse uh, as you gain belly fat was what they found. So, and that can actually happen early, as early as 40. So it's, it's not something that you can say, hey, I'm young, I can take it, I'm, I can lose weight later. It's a terrible excuse because it may, it's harder and harder to lose weight later. So it's very important for your future and for your present that you get control over your belly fat. So, if you make a if you make a decision to ignore this, which many people will, then you're making a decision. So you're avoiding the decision to do something about it. You're actually making a decision to put yourself at risk for Alzheimer's disease. Because now, currently, we have many ways of helping you lose belly fat and to get to an ideal weight. Um, before this last five years, we didn't have all of these tools, but now doctors do have these tools. We do this in our weight loss program, but I'll tell you, if you don't follow a healthy diet and learn how to eat while you're on weight loss medications, you're going to gain it right back. And that's what we're seeing when people just depend on the drug and then they don't change their life. While you are on the medication to help you decrease your appetite, help you eat less, you should be changing your lifestyle, eating smaller portions, ordering smaller portions, um, preparing less food at night, not eating when you're nervous, not eating because you have nothing else to do. Do something else with your hands, do your nails, I mean, whatever, but don't just put things in your mouth. So it, it's a whole lifestyle change. You have to be committed to that before uh, we consider giving you uh, giving you medicine for weight loss because you're just going to be unhappy when it comes back if you don't change your life. And that means your family's life as well, and you'll be doing them a favor. One of the other things that we tell people to do while, they're, uh, while we're working on their weight is, first of all, if you're over 40 and your testosterone is low, you should get your testosterone replaced and we suggest pellets because it's the safest, easiest, and healthiest way to get your testosterone replaced. Because it's really hard to build muscle and it's really hard to lose fat if you don't have testosterone after 40. What men are a little later, usually they're after 50, but they still get the belly fat after 40. Um, first of all, you should limit the carbohydrates in your diet and you should learn what carbohydrates are. And it's very easy, go online, say, what foods have carbohydrates in them? Then look at all the foods and then say, okay, I can eat the fruit and vegetables that have carbohydrates in them because they have other things for me and they're not going to increase fat. They'll make me feel full. But I'm not going to eat things made out of grains, which is oats and wheat and corn and barley. All of those things that are made out of grains, including alcohol and white potatoes, uh, should be limited to almost nothing if you want to, if you want to get your... Uh, body down and be healthy. You should increase your daily exercise, and when I'm saying this, the operative word is daily. You should exercise every single day doing something. If it is just doing calisthenics and you're raising your heart rate and you do it for 20 minutes, then that's exercise. If you're just living your life, that's not exercise, unless, you're, and, unless you do physical labor. So the things that we have on top of lifestyle changes. One is diet pills. We've had those for, you know, decades. Uh, they're amphetamines, and we don't usually use them with patients who are over uh, 50 because they increase blood pressure. So it's very important for us to monitor your blood pressure as we monitor your weight loss. And all those do is decrease your, uh, your appetite, and then they also increase your metabolism a little bit. But you're going to have to do half the work, and half the work is changing your life. Um, another option is Zenical. You guys might know it as Orlistat. Um, it was it was in vogue about 15 years ago, and it was great, except it gave people fatty diarrhea, and they lost fat out of their body, which made them then uh, rebound hungry because losing too much fat out of your body is not good either. Your brain is made out of fat. So um, that was not perfect, um, but could be used in people who are um, over 50. Qsimia, 
is a combination of um, topiramate, topamax, and fentiramine. And that can increase your blood pressure as well. So we, we can't use that if someone has high blood pressure or is over 50. Uh, Contrave is another option. It is naltrexone, which is something similar to the drug we use. Um, Low-dose naltrexone we use for uh, pain and some autoimmune diseases, but it's combined with an antidepressant. And that does decrease, decrease your hunger, but it also can decrease your sex drive, which is the side effect. Um, semaglutide is the new guy on the block or the new woman on the block, whichever you want to say. Uh, semaglutide is the medication that everybody's been raving about recently. And it's a shot and it's a once a week shot and you progressively increase your dose. And the side effect is that it can give you really bad, uh, GERD or reflux or heartburn, whichever way you, whatever you want to call it. That actually um, is the biggest complaint. And if people, ha if somebody has had um, pancreatitis or um, gallbladder disease uh, in the past and still has a gallbladder, it can cause a recurrence of pancreatitis or gallbladder disease. Therefore, those are the people who can't take it or shouldn't take it. And it has to be monitored by a physician. And you still have to change your lifestyle because when you come off of it, your hunger will come back. And, you know, I've talked before about how some people are always hungry, some people are never full. Well, it fixes that. And some people actually have to be on this, have um, those qualities and, and the reasons that they've gained weight. If they want to be healthy, they may have to be on a low dose of this the rest of their lives. Um, also, people who have diabetes may because it manages diabetes pretty well. Uh, one form that we've used on a lot of people, very few uh, side effects, is metformin. It's inexpensive, unlike the semaglutide, which is very expensive. And it has to be met metformin extended release. And we give that only with meals. We usually use that uh, and dose it according to weight. So if you weigh 130 and you're 5 feet tall and you need to lose 15 pounds, then we're going to dose one pill, pill at dinner. If you weigh, like my husband weighs uh, 230, then you're probably going to have to take four of those a day. So you work your way slowly up to that to help you with abnormal blood sugars, abnormal hunger, and it does help you lose weight. But you ha can't eat a high-carbohydrate diet on it, or guess what? It punishes you with diarrhea. There's always something, right? And last but not least is Victoza and Sixenda. Those are diabetic drugs. They're similar to the semaglutide that I talked about, but not really. They are really good for bringing blood sugar down. So if somebody's diabetic, it's really good for that, but it also decreases appetite. It also keeps you from um, binge eating, uh, but it has a the side effect also of uh, GERD, which is the reflux. So we have to, your doctor has to pick the right medication for you, and then has to bring the medication up to a level that will work for you. And a medication uh, has to be followed. You have to be followed by a nurse or a physician. Um, when we use these tools, they're great, amazing tools, and they can uh, help, you can pick one of those that will help you, help literally everybody. Um, so I think it's something that you should talk about with your physician if you do have belly fat. If you have been trying to lose weight on your own and you can't, uh, first you should try yourself and see if you can exercise daily and continue it as a habit, keep it in your life, and also eat properly. Whole foods are the best. Uh, foods have been processed, like cookies, cakes, candies, um, uh, even crackers, cereals, the, all of those are carbohydrates that are going to work against any kind of weight loss that you have. Uh, I talked about semaglutide. I think I have to um, give you a little more information on that. Semaglutide is the new drug, but it's also called Wagovi. It's also called Ozempic uh, and Ribelsis. They are all semaglutide, and they are all the ones that everybody's talking about a shot a week and you lose weight and you increase your dose. It's very, very effective. Uh, you can't eat a full meal, and if you're on it, you should not eat a full meal. The minute you're full, you have to stop, or you'll throw up and feel miserable. 
Uh, the same family of drugs is uh, terz terzapeptide, and that is Mongero, which is for diabetics, and the same or similar drug is called Zepbound, which has recently been approved for weight loss. This is, I kind of consider these a little more effective for people who don't lose the weight they need to lose or hit a wall on the semaglutides, or people who have been massively overweight for their whole life. They need an extra boost, and these seem to, this is a combination of medications, and that this seems to help. Has the same side effects as Ozempic and Wagovi and Ribelsis. Um, and the indications for the Mongero is diabetes, but the indication for Zepbound is, same drug, is weight loss. So, all of them decrease your hunger. All of them are very effective for weight loss and for people with insulin resistance. So, we started talking about Alzheimer's disease. And it comes down to the fact that almost all the diseases of aging have to do with inflammation, and inflammation has to do with accumulation of visceral fat. So, if you have, still have your waistline, but you have, like, skin or fat under your skin, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about when you've lost your waistline, and it, it is getting bigger and bigger, and you can't control it. That is what is going to put you at risk. So, please make a choice to change your lifestyle and seek help in weight loss so that you don't have to suffer from any of these diseases over time, and sometimes they hit earlier than you would anticipate, so you can't just change your lifestyle at the last minute. You need to prepare for these things. Thank you for listening. I hope this helps. I hope it helps you give you a better understanding of some of the risks that you don't even know about yet. So um, please take this as a friendly reminder, and I hope that you remember it when you see your doctor next time. Thank you. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth.